As ever, get in touch with us, gbviews at gbnews.uk. Now, Meghan and Harry are back at it. We're going to be treated to a new chapter of their unauthorised biography, back by unpopular demand. That's right, the self-pitying, fancy-dress-loving trust fund baby and the Z-list actress are revealing... Nothing. That's right. The gist is that they thought about naming the royal racist, but then didn't because it would be too damaging to that person's reputation. Call me a cynic, but I suspect they didn't name them because that person might have said, OK, then I'll see you in court. And now you have to prove that I said that, which they clearly can't. Apparently, the new leaked chapters in the biography reveal that Meghan found the Oprah interview cathartic and liberating and that the couple are upset that the Queen, yes, the actual Queen, didn't take any accountability for unsubstantiated claims of racism made by a woman who is about as popular as Novichok with her own family. It's sad to see how far Harry has sunk. He was once the nation's sweetheart. He had an approval rating close to 100%, but now he's polling lower than Jeremy Corbyn on election day. What gets me about Harry and Meghan is the total lack of self-awareness. Earlier this week, it emerged that Harry took a private jet home from a polo match so please lecture me more about privilege and environmentalism. People don't like hypocrisy. People don't like people who whinge all the time. When Harry bemoaned the fact that his dad cut him off on international television, I felt a bit sorry for him. Not because he'd actually been cut off, but because I realised that this 36-year-old Eton-educated multimillionaire had no idea how pathetic he sounded. He was a millionaire while he was in the womb, for goodness sake. Most people aren't living off daddy at the age of 36, Harry. Harry's been reduced to making the occasional vacuous Instagram video, lecturing us all about kindness, allowing Netflix to follow him about for a bit and sometimes hanging around with Elton John. While he was playing polo, Kabul was falling to the Taliban and the Gurkhas were on hunger strike outside Downing Street. Harry did two tours of Afghanistan, yet he's been quite quiet about those two issues. Clearly it was more important to cosy up to his celebrity polo mates and occasionally highlight the plight of some far-flung cause than it was to do something meaningful. Harry and Meghan have a do-as-I-say, not-as-I-do attitude that grates on people. They epitomise everything that's wrong with the elites. They think that they have the right to lecture us, to tell us how to live our lives, to do us all a favour by passing on the sage wisdom that they, and only they, obtained when they reached enlightenment at a barefoot herbal tea-infused Hollywood yoga retreat. Well, maybe Harry should do less lecturing and more listening. Harry, I'm going to tell you something that your team of happy, clappy LA yes-men won't. You're making a fool of yourself, in my opinion, and we're not laughing with you.